everyone, my name is Edith Vidayani and I'm a professional pianist. And today we're going to be talking and I'm going to be reviewing the Pluthner PH Grand Piano. Um, this one is actually a very special one because um, as you can see, like even just from the design itself, it's not your regular piano, like your le regular like black box or, you know, like the ones that you, it's, it's just seems very, very old. This one has a lot of personality, as you can see, even without like playing it, you can see like how much it has personality. But more than just that, it's just like I always feel um, this piano particularly is very, very modern in its conception. Um, what is very interesting is this is actually designed uh, by Paul Henningsen. He's a Danish, um, I think a Danish designer. I think if, if, if you know, like he usually is referred by just PH. But basically it's just like there's this PH idea. Like so there's that PH lamb. Like if you guys don't know what a PH lamb is, you should definitely, definitely check it out. But basically, it's like this piano is designed by the same guy. Um, so it's not just about the piano itself. Because of course, it's just like when we're talking about the piano, you want to be able um, for it to have a really good instrument property. Like you want a good sound, you want good resonance, you want good everything. Yes, of course. And this piano actually has it. Like in a lot of ways, it's just like I feel because this is made by Bluthner. So the design is by Paul Henningsen, but then the piano itself, the make of it is actually by Bluthner. And then so you have that idea of tradition. Like Bluthner has been around since like the 19th century, I think. And then like Liszt and Debussy and Rahmaninoff, everybody like kind of plays Bluthner as well, like ever since it was it was it was made. And then so it has that tradition. It has that idea of like a really, really great instrument, like made um, with the highest um, standard, basically. But now it also brings you that idea of design. This particular one, um, the this pH um, is, as you can see, it has a python on the side, which is it's, it's just very cool in my mind. But apparently it's also um, able to be customized. So this piano is apparently very customizable. Can you imagine that? It's just like, how many options can you think of? Like, it's just like, there's this piano, but then you can make it any way you want. It's like a combo meal at McDonald's. Well, not McDonald's, but you get what I mean. But it's just like basically, you, it, it, the, like you, you don't have any limits. Like you can think about whatever it is that you want. So from what I learned, so this banding over here, um, you can customize it with anything you want. It's a little spiky, um, but you can, you can customize it with anything you want. They have like the regular, what they call the regular, it's actually just like a regular like leather, like cow leather banding. And then that one, so just don't think about it as one. Apparently like you can have it at any color you want, which means no matter what color your room is, the piano can be suited, like it can fit into your room, which is amazing in my mind because then your piano becomes a part of your home. It's not just merely an instrument, like right over there just to be played, but it's, it's, it's not just the instrument, it's a part of your home. Um, so you have the regular cow leather banding. Um, apparently you can also have ostrich, um, Maybe if somebody wants to match it with their bag. <laughs> but basically you have the ostrich one and then you also have the crocodile one. Of course, the price is varied, um, con like depending on what you want, depending on your budget, depending on what you like. Um, those of, like everything is, is, is obviously um, customizable in that sense too. It's just like how high you can go, how low you can go. But in a lot of ways, it's like, I really feel that this instrument is very special because of that. So you can find the instrument for you that match your style, um, but also actually is very well crafted because it's not just whatever instrument. It's, it's actually like Bluthner, like it has that um, good properties of being a piano. So um, like, for example, like, let me just get into the sound for a little bit. So this is the Chopin Etude, just so that you can kind of get um, the feel of the piano itself, so you know what it sounds like. Let me warm up. Okay, so this is Chopin Etude Opus 10 number 5. It's very pretty, it's just like it's very bright, um, it's very clean. Like you don't have like that heaviness that goes in the bass because I feel like a lot of the modern pianos that we have right now, especially by the big um, companies, the big brands, it's just like they, they don't really have that evenness throughout the ranges, which I think Blutner actually did very, very well. So then the thing is, it's like when you have the... 
going, it still has that lightness, even though you go, even though you go low, which is um, a lot of the times bass are always very overwhelming. And so you have to work harder, I guess, as a pianist, because I like to work lighter <laughs> as much as possible. But this piano makes it easy because I don't have to work as hard to voice my left hand, um, considering that the fact that the, the ranges are all very even. But at the same time, it's just like, it has that power. Like you can harness that power. Like when you have the... So you can still have that like really big resonance, really um, powerful sound, but it's also very sensitive. Like you can change character like really, really quickly. And it really listens to you, which is something that I really, really like in pianos because you want the piano that will work with you instead of you having to like fight to like get something out of them. Um, what is also very interesting about Bluthner is the fact that it has, it, it, it comes from tradition, right? So I, I told you that Bluthner was in, uh, founded in the 19th century and all of those type of stuff, which means that it's actually, we think of it as, um, like I, I just played Chopin, but when we think about it, it's just like the, the, the 19th century, it, it's probably a little bit more lighter in sound, like you have the Mozart, the Beethoven, the Schuberts, and then you know like how most of the time in modern pianos, it's also very, very difficult for you to get the right sound for those type of um, period, like the classical period. And, um, because of this evenness, back to that point of evenness of, of, of action and tone, um, playing Schubert is actually really, really easy in this piano because you don't feel heavy. So this is um, a little bit of the Schubert 664, the first movement. It's very light, it's very pretty, it's very easy like to achieve the sound that you want. And um, what is also really interesting about this is the fact that, you know like in grand pianos, how usually the stand is a little bit further in the inside because of the design of the piano itself. Well, with this one, it's just like you get that feeling of like having the score really close to you. So it's actually easier to read um, whenever you're learning a new piece too. What I really, really want to talk about also is the fact that it has no frame, like it has no um, case, I guess, in, in, in the sense. It's just like when you see the piano and then you see the fact that it has no case, you always think it's like, oh, is it actually going to affect resonance? Is it actually going to affect um, the sound production? It actually is not, like, which is why I put this at the end of my, um, my points. It's just because like, when, you, when you hear what I just played or when I play it, it's just like I don't feel like I'm missing that outer frame or outer case like, of the piano. For me, it always just seemed very easy. But again, it's just like it, it's, a lot of people always ask me, it's just like, this is crazy. Like, how can you have like, the piano that has no um, case? And then I was just like, so what? Number one is like you can actually get to see the mechanism better, which means that you can actually see the intricacies of the craftsmanship that goes inside there. But also the second one is just like it looks really nice. Like if you guys like, there, I'm sure that there will be like a detailed shot of this, but it's 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 really really nice to see what's going on in there. And then the fact that it's actually very easily accessible and easily um, looked at like even if you're even if you're watching somebody else play another thing too is just like the fact that it doesn't have any side bars over here which is also very interesting like when you play something because you feel like you might just like kind of like jump off a cliff over there but it's actually very fun because you feel like everything that you do is just like people can actually see it and for the people who are actually looking at somebody playing on this piano they get to see all of the hands like there is no like when you get over here and then the hand is covered like there is none of that feeling so at the same time it's just like this feels very modern but when you hear it it sounds like tradition, which is the best of both worlds. It's just like you don't have to really compromise about which one you actually want. It's just like you get a little bit of everything. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the review. Like it, it sounds really nice. The design is very, very pretty. Oh, another thing that I also want to mention is just like the fact that lots of people usually cover their piano at home. Don't cover this, please. If you decide to get it, please don't cover it because it's such a beautiful <laughs> instrument and that, like in terms of design like for me it's just like in terms of the design it's actually very very beautiful even when you take the lid down 
it still looks very, very beautiful. It becomes like your focal point of, uh, of the room. And it's, it's a feast not only for the ears because the sound is beautiful, but it's also for the eyes because you get to see this every single day in your home. Um, another fact about Blusner that is always very, very nice with their grand pianos is like it doesn't matter like which design you get because Blusner has a couple more lines, right? It's not just this one. They also have like a regular line, but it's always the fact that after your D6, like all the way to the end, it's like it actually has that technology that they call the aliquot strings. So because of this idea that they wanted to have evenness throughout all the ranges, sometimes it's just like over over to the top when it doesn't, um, they, they want something that rings a little bit more. And the way that they achieve that is through this technology that they call the aliquot string. So what happens is just like they actually add an extra string so instead of three strings, you have four. But then the ones that are actually struck with the hammer is only the regular three strings. So the fourth are actually resonating just based on sympathetic resonance. So because the other strings are hit and then this one actually um, vibrates as well, which is very, very nice because then sometimes, you know, like usually we always have that difficulties of trying to project this more, especially with something that's a little bit um, the texture is a little bit thick. So what, what happened is, is like, like even the Chopin H is the one that I told you about. Um, the like that brilliance of, that brilliance of it, it's just like it actually um, comes and I think it's helped by the fact that it has a fourth string that has sympathetic resonance. Um, in it so it's always very very nice what is also interesting also about this piano is the fact that it only has two pedals it doesn't have three like um, like the usual our usual grand pianos but then at the same time it's just like two is actually enough like for me at least for a professional pianist it's like it's very very rare that we have like we use the middle pedal the middle pedal is usually function to like hold just a certain notes and then every, everything else still has the damper but um, this is basically just a sostenuto and the una corda um, and for me it's actually enough um, especially because this piano is usually geared for the home um, with the size itself, 190, it's actually perfect for any room. Like you can have it in this type of room or you can also have it in a slightly bigger room or a slightly smaller room and it'll all still um, functions very, very well. Another thing too is just like the fact because of the design, um, if you see like how unique the legs of the pianos are, um, it actually adds um, to the charm of the piano itself, in my honest opinion. But at the same time, it's just like, as you can see, it has no wheels. So it's probably a little bit more difficult for you to like move around. But also it's just like, if you take it for your house, like if, if this, this is not, this is not like a concert grand piano that you will have. I want to say like in a concert hall where you have to like wheel piano in and out every single day. Chances are you're probably going to have this in your house or for like a, in a place that's probably a little bit more, um, stable like the positioning of the piano is a little bit more stable like usually like when you have a piano at home you don't move it every single week right you don't move it from room to room every single week so in and of itself yes it doesn't have wheels but I also don't think that you would move piano <laughs> that much so um, that's the PH um, Blusner PH Grand let me know if you have any comments and I look forward to review more pianos for you